In a world of nonstop crises, uncertainty, fear, and never-ending bad news, people long for good news. I have the very best news you could ever hear. The truth of the gospel, God's astonishing purpose for man, has been withheld from the world. It explains why you were born. The real gospel, the true gospel, involves incredible knowledge that will leave you dumbfounded. No one is telling you about it, and you could not discover it on your own. The World to Come, the Restored Church of God presents David C. Pack. Billions are deceived. Previous billions have been. Even you have been lied to. Every religion has played a part. Knowledge of your incredible future, your awesome potential, has been kept from you. You can be among the few who are not deceived. Many wonder and worry about the unknown and what their future holds. Others fear they do not even have a future. Still others fear civilization has no future. You need never again doubt your future or mankind's. The world has believed a false gospel for 2,000 years. It is generally supposed that Jesus Christ is the gospel rather than the messenger of it. The gospel message, its very centerpiece, is not about Jesus. By focusing on Him, the messenger, deceivers have been able to successfully suppress and cover up the message He brought. The vital knowledge of how man could have solved his problems and understood God's supreme purpose has been withheld, keeping the world in darkness. Thus man does not know what he is or his reason for being. He does not know the way to abundance, peace, happiness, and all the good things of life. The gospel would have shown man the solution to his most insoluble problems. And yet, except for the apostle John, all the original apostles were martyred. Think of it, put to death for teaching the truth of God's incredible purpose. Jesus was crucified because people did not want to hear his message. The true gospel reveals crucial knowledge. It contains a dimension of understanding that cannot be discovered by scientific inquiry. Every supposed great religion has helped suppress the gospel. Their theologians neither comprehend nor are willing to teach it. Both Jesus and the apostles plainly preached the gospel. Jesus commanded in Mark 1.15, Repent you and believe the gospel. But exactly what is it that we, you, are to believe? Just what is the true gospel? Do you know? Be careful of assumptions. For instance, did Jesus teach the same gospel that Paul preached to the Gentiles? And what does the word gospel mean anyway? The vast majority of professing Christians do not know the all-important answers to even these most basic questions and many others related to the gospel Jesus taught, the only true one. Jesus came as a first century newscaster, bringing advance good news of staggering events to occur just beyond the horizon and all the bad news throughout today's world. This climactic news involves you and eventually every human being on earth personally. Six new books on religion are published every day in America, and there are over 2,000 forms of Christianity in the United States. There has never been more confusion and disagreement about the answers to humanity's problems. Troubles, woes, evils, and human difficulties of every kind are multiplying. World peace is more elusive than ever. Why? Why is there so much knowledge available to mankind, yet so much ignorance about life's biggest questions? All of this has everything to do with the gospel. Revelation 12 and verse 9 reveals this. The devil, Satan, it says, deceives the whole world. What a big statement. If true, then deceit would certainly apply to the crucial matter of the correct knowledge of the message Jesus brought. Almost everyone believes the gospel is about the person of Jesus Christ. He plays an extremely important and central role to Christianity, but he is not the gospel. 
The Bible shows that Jesus is preached in conjunction with the gospel. Some proclaim a gospel of salvation. Others one about grace. Still others believe one about miracles or a social gospel. Yet others think of the gospel of foods, believe it or not, or healing or faith or tongues. And there are some who merely think of gospel music. These man-made ideas all ignore the Bible. Now more of Mark's account. After that John, the Baptist, was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of, here it is, the kingdom of God. This is the gospel Jesus preached. It was in this context that he said, repent you and believe the gospel. Which gospel? Of the kingdom of God. Mark 1.1 states the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ was about the kingdom of God, not something else. One must believe and understand that gospel, not any humanly devised counterfeit or substitute. This subject is so important that God inspired the Apostle Paul to warn the Galatians then and us now. Notice, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Read that again. Christ's message can be perverted. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we, meaning the apostles, have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel, he repeats, unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. This is a strong warning to those who will heed. Tragically, only a few have. A little later, Paul stressed that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. He was speaking to the Galatians. There is one true gospel with all others false. I didn't say that. God did through Jesus and Paul. Although some assert Paul taught a different or additional gospel, it is plain he never did. Ironically, God used Paul to warn against ever allowing such false teaching by pronouncing a curse on any man or even angel who violates this command. Remember, though we, even apostles, preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. A powerful warning. Paul explained that God's ministers were entrusted by God to preserve the truth of the gospel. Notice. As we, apostles, were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which tries our hearts. This is a responsibility not to be taken lightly. True ministers must always teach what God commands, not what pleases men, including Bible scholars. That Paul taught a different or second gospel either about Christ or some idea about peace or grace, is impossible. He would literally have been pronouncing a curse on himself. Did you know Jesus was foretold to bring the gospel? In the Old Testament, he was prophesied to come as a messenger. Let's read. Behold, I will send my messenger, typed by John the Baptist, and he shall prepare the way before me, Christ, and the Lord... Christ, whom you seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in. Christ was the messenger of the covenant, including the gospel, not the message itself. Now compare Malachi with another passage. The law and the prophets were until John the Baptist. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man who chooses presses into it. Remember Mark, Jesus there preached the kingdom of God and called it the gospel. Gospel is an old English word meaning God's spell or good news. So is kingdom, which simply means government. Therefore, it is most accurate to say Christ preached the good news of the government of God. You can know the who, what, where, when, why, and how of this good news and how it relates to the Bible's very greatest prophecy. We do not have time for all of that now. 
God's kingdom is the dominant theme of not only the New Testament, but of the whole Bible. Yet, incredibly, most know little or nothing of it because this world's ministers are oblivious to this gospel and never preach it. Therefore, virtually the whole world stands in complete ignorance of the single greatest truth in God's Word. The word gospel is found over 100 times in the Bible. Sometimes it's alone, and sometimes of the kingdom follows it. Other times it includes kingdom of God, or the equivalent kingdom of heaven. Notice of heaven, not in heaven. There's a big difference. Just as kingdom of God means God's kingdom, not the kingdom in God, the kingdom of heaven is heaven's kingdom. Grasp this crucial point. In the New Testament, kingdom is found 27 times, kingdom of God 75 times, and kingdom of heaven 34. These are all the same. Paul preached God's kingdom to the Gentiles, but he certainly did not neglect Christ's role in the salvation process. He said, I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, repentance toward God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 19.8 establishes further which gospel Paul preached. He went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Paul's message was always the same. He preached, taught, and referred to the kingdom of God, one gospel to both Jew and Gentile. The book of Acts offers this last picture of his life. Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke, who recorded Acts, differentiates between preaching the kingdom and about Jesus Christ. While both are vitally important, they are separate subjects. The deacon Philip also preached both. Notice, when they believed Philip, concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Philip differentiated between God's kingdom and Christ. The messenger is not the message. These Samaritans were baptized only after they believed, meaning the right message, not some human idea. Also, Jesus' name was taught as an all-important but additional understanding. Jesus is not the gospel, but he stands directly alongside it. And, as the future head of God's kingdom on earth under the Father, he will rule all nations with the saints beside him after his return. Do not lose sight of this. Paul further distinguishes between the gospel and Jesus' person in this warning. If he that comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him, meaning you'd follow him. Paul wanted the Corinthians to hold to what he taught. The point is that true Christians distinguish between the teaching of a false Jesus and teaching about a false gospel. These are two different errors. Some get confused when reading 1 Corinthians 15, thinking Paul contradicts himself by stating that the gospel, referenced in verse 1, is how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. Careful reading makes clear the word gospel in verse 1 is not connected to Christ's death for our sins and his burial, verses 3 and 4. When correctly understood, rather than saying Jesus is the gospel, which would contradict all other passages on the subject, 1 Corinthians 15 confirms the opposite and supports all the verses we have seen, and many more. Since Jesus preached repent and believe the gospel, it should now be clear why. His role as Savior for giving sins we have repented of must be preached alongside God's kingdom. No one can enter it and rule with Christ unless he understands and accepts that Christ died for our sins, and that person has repented of his sins. What evidence is there that other New Testament writers preach the same message? A lot. Notice the Apostle Peter. An entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now James. 
Has not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to them that love him? Matthew three times mentions gospel of the kingdom. Here's one. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. In most of his parables, Jesus taught the basics of God's kingdom. Think, Matthew alone makes over 50 references to it. Luke records what Jesus commissioned his disciples to preach. He called his 12 disciples together and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. Soon after, he sent 70 more and they also spoke of the kingdom of God. Acts contains an extraordinary passage about God's kingdom. Peter is speaking. Repent you therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution or restoring of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Notice Peter refers to Christ's coming as the presence of the Lord, meaning he would be back here on earth at that time. He explains God shall send Jesus Christ and describes God's kingdom as the restitution of all things. Peter stated that this restitution, Christ restoring his kingdom to Israel first, is something God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets, again, since the world began. This is stunning. Did God actually use every prophet to announce his kingdom? Bible scholars and religionists ignore this, and some outright reject it without examination. Let's review just a few Old Testament examples beginning before the flood. The apostle Jude, Jesus' brother, recorded, Enoch, Noah's great-grandfather who lived before the flood, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all. These verses plainly refer to Christ coming to establish a world-ruling government under himself and the saints, with a relative few, only ten thousands. Read it again. The Bible calls Enoch a preacher of righteousness. Starting with Abel, there were seven others with their lives spanning the entire period from Adam to the flood. All these spoke the same message. Remember, Peter said, since the world began. Is there evidence the gospel was preached soon after the flood? In Genesis, God told Abraham, in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. This verse is referenced in Galatians. In you shall all nations be blessed. And it there says the gospel was preached before unto Abraham. This is fascinating knowledge. Not only did Abraham have the gospel preached to him, probably by Melchizedek, but Genesis was written by Moses. Now ask, how could all nations be blessed unless Christ establishes his government on earth where the nations are? Moses, the first man to lead Israel as both prophet and judge, taught the gospel to Israel in the wilderness. Read Numbers chapter 24, verses 17 to 19. Acts 3.24 mentions Samuel the prophet as preaching the gospel. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. These powerful statements cannot be glossed over. All God's prophets, as many as have spoken, foretold of these days. Believe this. Next, King David preached God's kingdom. Let's see. You, God, shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth, not heaven. This obviously refers to his coming supergovernment. The prophet Isaiah recorded a longer statement. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government, 
and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. This is so plain it needs no explanation. Now the prophet Jeremiah. The days come, says the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. Obviously this is not the case now. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Again, no explanation needed. The prophet Ezekiel wrote this of Israel's descendants alive today. I, God, will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries, where they will soon go into captivity and will bring you into your own land. The next 10 verses describe a rebuilding and national prosperity only possible after Christ's return to Jerusalem. They are unmistakably clear. The prophet Daniel wrote, The God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms of men and stand forever. All of those called the latter prophets spoke of the kingdom of God in one way or another. You may wish to study them. You will see God's plain words. Remember, the phrase, the gospel of the kingdom of God, is not the only way to describe God's coming government. Peter was right. God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began of the restitution of all things. One final big point. It says God has spoken. The kingdom of God is a message from God, not any man. And it should now be clear God speaks through whatever servant he is using, prophet, patriarch, pastor, judge, deacon, preacher of righteousness, king or apostle. God's servants always spoke the same message. Everyone knows Jesus often spoke in parables. In Matthew 13 alone, he presented seven, most very short. Each illustrates aspects of the kingdom, collectively painting a full picture. Notice. The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becomes a tree. So the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. The mustard seeds Jesus' audience was familiar with were extremely small, very hard to see. This is why he called them the least, meaning small in size, of all seeds. God's kingdom is akin to microscopic when it arrives. It eventually grows into a world government, becoming the greatest among herbs, a tree. But it does not start that way. This parable is virtually never mentioned because nobody truly understands it. The next parable confirms the kingdom's small beginning. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. The Greek word hid is encrypto, meaning concealed in. Think of the modern equivalent, encrypted. Jesus says, literally, he is bringing an encrypted kingdom. It is initially hidden, initially concealed among the nations, but it expands because leaven always spreads. Jesus underscores this in a third parable. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found, he hides and for joy thereof goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Hid here comes from crypto, meaning to conceal by covering. Jesus' message is again made clear. God's kingdom starts tiny, hidden, and covered. One must go and find it. To learn more about how the kingdom of God arrives, and this is a great unknown to everyone, read How God's Kingdom Will Come, The Untold Story. In the Matthew 24 and 25 Olivet Prophecy, Jesus was asked about events that would be the sign of his second coming and of the end of the world, or age. He foretold certain trends and conditions that would occur first 
then added, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The true gospel was foretold to be preached until the end come. This means someone will be preaching it now in our present age, because the end, however close, has not yet come. The restored church of God is doing this. Preaching the truth of the gospel to all nations was restored by Herbert W. Armstrong beginning in 1934. God used this man to reach hundreds of millions with this message throughout a 52-year ministry that ended with his death in 1986. Mr. Armstrong taught me the true gospel and trained me to be able to take this message to the world. Make no mistake, Jesus Christ will soon return to earth and establish his kingdom. It will reign over the entire earth, all nations, and the resurrected saints, those who have qualified to rule with Christ, will share this reign with him. In half an hour, you have learned more about the true gospel of the Bible than most begin to know. Take time to read which is the true gospel. You will be glad you did. This extraordinary booklet makes plain the gospel Jesus taught. Be sure to view other World to Come programs. They are like nothing else you will hear. The gospel is but one of many subjects in the Bible that have been badly misunderstood. The law of God, the origin of men's holidays, the ultimate future of mankind, salvation, heaven, hell, the existence and nature of God, the identity of the lost ten tribes of Israel, the truth about the devil, the purpose of the family, the Sabbath, real faith, proper baptism, true conversion, financial laws, and so many other Bible topics are covered. Here on this program you will hear the plain truth of these and many more subjects, and you will hear prophecy made plain, the very biggest elements of it made easy to understand and in the light of world news. Try to view every program. Until next time, this is David C. Pack saying goodbye, friends. This program was made available by Restored Church of God members and donors from around the globe. Explore our vast library of literature and other World to Come programs, which are all made available free of charge. To order literature featured in this program, call toll-free 1-855-828-4646. That number again, 1-855-828-4646.